Hi everyone and a very warm welcome back to the watercolor studio. Now today I'm going to be doing a little bit of a scribble so let's roll the intro and let's see what I'm on about. Hi everybody and a warm welcome back. Now as I said just now, I am going to be doing a little bit of scribbling. I just fancy getting the pens out and have a little play about and I felt that it would be nice to do a lovely old gnarly tree that I saw recently at a garden fair that I took my wife to and while she was enjoying the fair with her daughter, I simply got my sketchbook out and did a bit of doodling, a bit of scribbling and had a bit of fun. So I felt that it would be nice to do a little bit of that tonight for you. So we're going to do an ink and wash. We're going to do a little bit of drawing, which is a little more conventional. It's a little easier for most of you that if you are sort of starting out on the road of doing ink and wash, it would be nice to have that comfort zone of doing a bit of drawing first then doing either the watercolor or the ink. I will probably do the watercolor and then go back in finally with going over with some ink. So without further ado, let's get on and let's see what happens. Okay, everybody, before we get underway, as usual, let's just run through some of the supplies I'm going to be using today. You all know by now, I'm sure, my uh, watercolor palette is a Craig Young box. It has essentially 16 slots, but I am a greedy person. And I have got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight more than I probably should have. And Craig, if you're watching this, please forgive me for um, sort of making your uh, box seem overpopulated with color. Take all these out and you have a wonderful box, I've got to say. But anyway, enough of that. But I will list this uh, order of colors in the show more tab underneath this and many other other videos that I put out there So that you have an idea of what I'm using the palettes a little dirty today Not a worry. We can probably use some of these colors up in the initial washes over the drawing once we've got it done Now the paper I'm using well that is fairly new to me. This is a bao hung paper and it is a Chinese paper now they do two two versions they do this is which uh their top end their artist quality and they also do a graduate or student quality now to be fair i'm not quite sure what the differences are they're both 140 pound blocks and they're both full cotton papers i have been told that the uh, graduate one or the the lesser one that has a band through here on the display uh, has a more regular pattern if you use a knot or a rough surface. This is, however, a hot press surface, very, very smooth, and accepts the wash, the line, and ink work very, very nicely. And you can also do a lot of punishment with lifting out, as I've proven in more recent videos. And I'll put a link to one of those or two of those up here. And if you want to have a look at any of those where I've sort of used the paper and and sort of worked it hard to lift out some of the paints be my guess and after you finish this one please go over and have a look at one of those anyway enough of that let's get on and let's see what we are going to be drawing okay guys i nearly forgot the brushes of course now as usual i'm using my red dot series from rose ring company that's the number 14 the number uh, 10 5 and the number 2 rigger now these are used by me day in day out almost. They are starting to show a few signs of wear. Some of the hairs are starting to shift and not sit tight as they used to. But when they're wet, I can assure you that they still point up really beautifully and they have the desired effect each and every time. So these will last a long time and despite the amount of times that I use them. But don't forget, if you do decide to buy any of Rosemary's brushes, then when you get to the checkout section, look under the affiliate link, and please just put my name in Paul Apps, Unbroken Capitals there. That will give me a little thank you from Rosemary. You don't pay a penny more for the brush. It's just that they give me a little thank you for promoting them. But like I always say, I never promote anything that I haven't tried and trusted my 
itself over a long period of time and I've been using rosemary brushes now for probably close on 20 plus years I'm not sure exactly how long but an extremely long time now the pencil I'm using tonight is a simple uh, mechanical pencil it's a 0.5 uh, lead in there it's a 2B and it's a Faber Castell Apollo 2325 I have many different such pencils to use this is just the one that happened to pick up tonight and uh, to uh, draw with on this particular occasion but any one will do now this however can be something that you need to consider these are some of the pens that I have at my disposal and you do not need it has to be said you do not need to rush out and spend lots of money on ink pens and all these other lovely instruments you can and they're a lot of fun if you do but you can quite simply get a fine liner one or two of those maybe a, a zero two and a zero eight or just a zero five or a zero seven something that will make marks for you is all you actually need and at the same time uh, as long as the ink is waterproof you're good to go however I do like these pens I've got many different types and this one just to show you is what's called a hung dian and this is a forest blue you can tell the color and the nib color is the same but you can see here how the nib is bent to a 55 degree angle and that is quite simply to make it an italic writing pen a Japanese italic writing pen but it is fantastic for delivering multiple different sizes of marks when you come to do your ink drawing over a watercolor so i put that one away for the moment the second one that i've got so this one is just a simple lame pen and it has an extra fine nib in it so the idea is that when i draw or at least i'm inking up a drawing i like to put all my pen marks pretty much in a thin mark but then as i want to bring my interest closer the foreground elements closer I want to thicken up those marks and that's when I would turn to something like this which will deliver the same black ink but only in a variety of thicker and different marks to finish the painting off all right so enough said about all of that let's get on and let's see how we make this happen so as I said just now I'm going to do a very very simple drawing now this is a gnarly old tree I'm not quite sure what tree it is it does look like the bark of an old conifer type thing but I have no idea it's been in the grounds of the park for a long time as okay so welcome back now we're going to look at the initial washes I'm going to use my big brush my number 14 brush bearing in mind this is only a tiny small piece of paper this is only a um, what is it 10 by 7 so it's not huge and it's certainly a lovely little size to create some stunning little visual paintings as a practice medium other than going into great big uh, pieces of quarter half or even full imperial size paper all right so having said i was going to use most of this i probably will but i want to clear some of it out to make some fresh initial wash color now we've got some lovely sort of pinky violet colors in this tree i might use that for such and come in with a little bit of english light red this is a windsor color 
I've started using it recently and to that I'm going to add in a little bit of uh, Daniel Smith's lavender so we get that sort of off subtle violet color and I'm just going to literally plonk some of that in there it's not going to be very strong Now we have got in the back here, or sorry, in the foreground here, we've got lots of different logs from previous um, areas that have been chopped down and uh, a little bit of um, coppice in, or I don't know, whatever you call it, but I'm just going to pop in a few dabs and dashes like that that would help me suggest that there are little bits of information here. There is indeed what looks to be like uh, the base of another tree. Let's just put that in. Just suggest that there. So we can maybe do something with that later on in the painting. I don't know. We may ignore it. We may put it in. I'm going to let this dry off now and then I'm going to come back in and I'm going to add in some other layers before we finally get to doing a, a bit of inking. But what I want to draw your attention to before we actually do that, look at this lovely granulation. And I find that you can spend lots of money on buying specifically uh, colors from um, brands that will what they call the super granulation. They're a lot of fun, I'm sure they are. But paint can naturally granulate anyway. And it seems to be easier to achieve when you play around on hot pressed paper. Anyway, enough of that. I just thought I'd bring that to your attention. Let's get on and we'll come back in when this is dry and we'll add some more detail. Okay, so that's pretty much dry. It's not totally dry. You can still see a little bit of movement in the paper. The idea of a block is that it's gummed on every side with the exception of a little bit where you can get a credit card in there to lift off one sheet from the next. But essentially it acts like taping down your paper. So although this will expand where it's getting moist with water and your painting operation, once it dries it will dry back into a taut position and leaving you with a nice flat paper surface. So I'm not worried about that. This still because it's moving up and down i can see the wave through there it's suggesting to me or telling me that there is still moisture within it so i'm not worried about carrying on working because it's not enough to worry the situation but what i'm going to do now is start looking at some of the mid-tone values not my dark yet my mid-tone so we're going to come in with some of this lovely uh lovely turquoise color this cobalt turquoise I'm corrupting it with a little bit of the neutral tint just to make it a little grungier a little bit more in there and essentially what I'm going to do is look to where all my shadowy parts of my tree are in other words all the leaf all those shadowy parts of the leaves and I'm dashing and dotting
as a suggestion probably not worth the effort but hey if it works why not Hey okay, everybody, I'm sorry for that sudden and abrupt end to proceedings. Now, I had no idea, I was happily painting away here, and I hadn't realised that for some reason the screen had frozen quite like that. And uh, I was talking away, and the audio was coming out beautifully. For some reason, the screen capture had completely stopped and frozen in time. So, I'm hoping that uh, I can just talk you through what happened here and bring you up to speed. Fortunately, I hadn't gone so, so far. Now, the last thing you saw was me putting a little bit of cobalt in there just to suggest some sky. And then all I did was mixed up some varieties of some cobalt turquoise and some of the neutral tint from Schmincke to give me various degrees of darks. Now, I'd already started putting some of those on. All I did was went in with some of these other colors, darker ones, just to suggest more shadowy areas within our photographic reference. And, you know, so we can see in uh, the depths between the trees, beyond the trees, and some of the lights here, where I was talking about some of the traceries of branch work that we can put in later on uh, to suggest that there is that much greater contrast between these dark leaves against the light of the sky and the tree leaves beyond. So that's really all I was doing and I'm going to carry on with that now. Now I've realized the problem. it quite a brown but gungy a little bit of red in there too and I'm sort of looking for dark areas and I want to suggest some light areas so we've got lots of darks up in here allow me to suggest that that branch is going away into darkness but then you've got shadows cast shadows of tree branches leaves over the whole part of this trunk Come in and remix the palette color and now I'm going to be using some of that red which was our initial color. If you remember we used some of that light red there but to this one I'm going to add in loads and loads of this lavender color and uh, hopefully this will be the blue color shade that I'm looking for the shadowy parts in this tree. tree is pretty much done we'll let that dry we've got a lot of work to do with some darks later on we're going to come in here now and start on some of those bit of orange into our neutral tint that really is a strong ready dark color so look to where you want to put that now there is a bit of dark up in here i want to suggest that in there tapping again i'm not actually drawing the brush down just pressing and tapping dabbing with uh, the edges and the belly of the brush. I 
just want to sense that lovely light color a little bit of damp brush to ease and tease some of that out as it goes into there and then that can come down and we can come in with a deeper darker shadow down in there like that little bit of pure blue popping into that then that really did help a little bit of dark into this one here picked up quite a bit of green i saw on that but never mind Now, do I need to do any more to this tree? Well, it's quite warm. And that was quite deliberate. What I think I want to do, though, is I'm going to come in with some cobalt. And I'm going to mix some of that. And I'm going to use the cobalt now in a richer color. A little bit of orange into it, but cobalt. Now, this is doing the same thing as the um, raw sienna and the lavender was doing. Just different colors, but with the same sort of outcome. I just want to come in and try and make a stronger dark here that's to suggest the edge of that tree as it's coming down so that I think really is dry enough to start work on so first things first then I'm coming in with the extra fine point of the lame pen and I'm just going to squiggle and scribble which is what the whole idea of this painting was about just to scribble and squiggle and that's all I'm doing I'm not trying to refine or draw in any uh, particular leaf shape or form I'm just literally trying to assist <laughs> trying to suggest to you guys that there are leaves here now there are going to be lots of leaves here and I'm going to draw some of those shapes and forms to suggest the areas between some of them but essentially these are the heavier areas in here in shade and very little effect is felt on these areas out here just the odd tap of dark and light to suggest that uh, they're in bright sunshine. Lame pen is probably the most reliable of all of them to be fair they are a simple steel nib set and made to a certain size that's why you specify the size of nib that you want from extra fine fine medium or broad when you order one and because of that it will deliver that size of mark throughout its life as it were but they seldom stop working i've never had a problem with one of these
Try not to make patterns. That's one thing I should have said earlier. When you're doing this, is make shapes, forms, scribbles, as I keep telling you. But try not to do one, two, three, four, five, six. You're not creating patterns. Patterns will naturally occur, and when we look back at the painting in the future, or one of our potential buyers, one of our clients looks at our painting, they may well see shapes and patterns and forms that you never ever intended to reveal but they see them and that's not a problem at all that's just part of the um, picture making process you're going to create patterns with scribbles like this it's inevitable but at the same time you're not setting out to create them people see all sorts do need to do is I think put my signature but I'm last job I'm going to do I'm just going to come in with this uh, stronger pen and I'm just going to increase some of the marks that we are creating here in the edge and parts of the bark and I think we're pretty much done if I do any more I'm going to regret it I know it because there's a certain point you get to when you've got to look at it and say enough is enough I may have missed a bit here or missed a bit there but generally I've got two wonderful trees set in their ground set with the light the dappled light the sunshine's cascading through I've got one in the background so there's still light hitting it but not as apparent as this one next to it and indeed the one this side which I talked about earlier in this video uh, also um, had even more presence although it was a massively big tree and branch but I think we've done all that we need to do and I do hope that you've enjoyed it I certainly did Hey okay, everybody, one ink and wash painting of a pair of gnarly old trees in my local park completed. As always, I say this, but I really mean it, I had a whole heap of fun doing it. And I hope 
that that comes through in the way that I'm just let myself scribble away, have fun and see what happens. On top of that, it is quite a therapeutic process as well. But I just love the idea of scribbling over a painting and just seeing what I can make of it, marks that I can create from it to describe the scene and what I'm trying to paint. So I hope that come across and I do hope that you guys We'll have a go at this one yourselves in due course. Now, as always, the reference is free to download over on my Patreon. You do not need to be a patron to do that. Just pop on over there and download it and use it and, and enjoy that and see what you can make of it. But while you're on over the Patreon, why not check it out? There are two tiers. One has a video which is completely exclusive each and every month. And they also get the video from the lesser tier and that tier gets a video that's full length but maybe a uh, longer version of something that's appeared on YouTube. So they don't cost a lot but there is an awful lot on offer and there is a back catalogue. Heck I don't even know what there is on there now but there's an awful lot of video on there for you to enjoy. And of course when you get to become a patron you get access to all of that on your tier. So. Why not have a look? And I'd love to welcome you as my latest patron. On top of all that, please, I just wanted to say a big, big thank you to each and every one of you who've gone out of their way to help my channel by buying me a coffee. Now, I know that it's a completely voluntary thing, but every penny that people just go in and buy me a coffee, all of that money goes to carry on buying materials and paint and the paper that I need to keep creating videos that are for you guys to enjoy. So thank you very much. You know who you are. Um, thanks for buying my coffee. And if you want to help the channel out and help contribute and support what I'm doing, then please pop on and just buy me a coffee. And that's as simple as that. And if you're not a subscriber, may I ask, would you please hit that subscribe button, click the bell icon, and the notification tab it tells you when I upload an, a new video as and when that is and you get informed on that and also comments I love reading them I always answer them so you have a comment to make a suggestion a thought a question please put it down there and I'll always answer that don't forget both my courses there is one purely on ink and wash it's a recent one it's only 47 pounds pop on over to the link that's in this show more tab as well i'm doing all of this uh, uh, advertising but there is a the great there is a great course there many many hours of footage and lots of instruction lots of help 47 pounds and you've got it for life and you can just work your way through that and enjoy all of that there's also a one on painting skies if you want to paint learn to paint skies in watercolor too okay all that's out the way thanks ever so much for putting up with me so far certainly when this last bit with all that advertising i'm going to get ready for a new video i don't know when it's going to be out i am really really busy at the moment at work with the gallery and all of the stuff that i've talked to you about before but as soon as I can, I will always put out new content and a fresh video for you all to enjoy. So, like I said, click that bell icon and the notification tab and it will inform you every time I upload a new piece of content. Until the next time, stay safe wherever you are. Enjoy your painting. Pop on over the Patreon, download this footage or download the reference. Have a go at it. Catch you all very, very soon. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.